In this phenomenal conversation, we unpack Laura's journey, which includes how an incubation project within Liberty has blew up on a global scale, which has resulted in Laura taking the stage at AWS reInvent. We discuss Laura's own relationship when it comes to mentorship and also DEI and why we see a lack of women in senior technical roles and a very good analogy as to how that happens called the glue developer. This is a phenomenal conversation and I hope you enjoy. Laura, a very warm welcome to Cool Bites. Thank you. Great to see you soon. You come highly recommended. And I'm only used to seeing you with a helmet on and glasses and <laughs> trying to chase that back wheel of yours on the bike. <laughs> I know we had, we had a chat about how we didn't know how much we were into IT. It's like, only talk about cycling when I'm cycling. Nobody talks about IT when I'm doing yeah. IT. Nobody talks about workouting the bikes uh, or even about running. That's your escapism, uh, Laura. But listen, I'm really stoked and really excited to have you on here. Uh, I know you've got a couple of great things here to talk about and share. So I guess without further ado, Laura, I'd love for you to give our audience an overview of who you are, kind of what got you into technology and your career to date. Yes, I think even at school, I was a little, little bit unsure what to do. Love maths, love numbers. And I did do computer science at, at school, so I, I always did love it. And then going into uni, I still had an eye on, oh, I really like maths, maybe I'll do accountancy. And then it was like, oh gosh, no, I do not like all the tax law that goes with accountancy. So I flipped at uni to just doing then a solid computer degree, and that was it. You know, I was, I'm in, I know what vocation. I, I want to aim for now and I loved university time. Absolutely adored it. You know, learned so much even then because you know, you'd learned a little bit at school and, and you know, just really just you know, nailed it on the head for me. I just just loved it, loved it. So yeah, then straight from you know, um got a job offer in chaos. Um so I kind of, I thought I had, I had aspirations of like being in Scotland or maybe London, okay. but no, it was Belfast, <laughs> had the best job for me. Um, so yeah, Canos, I, so straight from uni, straight in as a grad into Canos, and that was in the days when we were learning C, doing C++, Java hadn't been invented then, <laughs> well it hadn't, not many people had picked it up. But yeah, kicked into Java. So that was a real like, you know, from going from, you know, the different, even different programming languages, like, oh, I love learning new mm. stuff. So even picking up a new language then was, was fabulous. So yeah, seven years at Kainos. And then I, I got an opportunity to go traveling, but it was traveling with a job. Um, and it was a contracting job. And Y2K, year 2000, where they thought airplanes would fall out of the sky from 1999 into 2000. There was so many companies put huge efforts into making sure that whole date problem um, was rectified for the year 2000. And yeah, I, I got five months of fabulous work in Sydney, Australia, <laughs> just on the back of that. Very lucrative. Um, it allowed me to do seven months traveling in the Southern Hemisphere. What an opportunity! Couldn't couldn't say no to that. And um, but I knew I knew I only wanted to travel for a short period of time. Came back to Northern Ireland, looked around the job market, and it was Liberty IT that uh, was definitely looking really hot. So you know, my, it was insurance working for Liberty Mutual Insurance, the child company of it, all based in Belfast, and I know now we've expanded to Dublin and Galway. But that was that was 2000, started as a senior. And yes, I've been there now 2024 and worked my way up, stayed tech and, and now as a senior architect. Love it. Really good company. And what would what would a typical day look like for you, Laura, as a, <laughs> a senior architect? Yeah, different day. <laughs> <laughs> but I well, you split in very much into two halves, um, working with the teams in Ireland, mm. uh, that's until the American, the hours kick in, four or five hours time difference come lunchtime, and then working with many architects in, in Liberty Mitchell across the pond, you know, trying to drive out new architectural patterns and 
I'm currently working in the quoting side of, of insurance. So we've got multiple quoting platforms trying to bring them together. It's not a small job. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get into that in uh, further detail, Laura. And I'm sure, like, your time at Liberty IT, like, it's just, I'm sure it's evolved drastically oh, totally. since she first started. Yeah, it's like, again, so I would have left Chaos doing Java, doing a lot of front-end, back-end work, and mm-hmm. you're kind of all over everything, because, well, apps were a lot smaller then, and now, you like, the web evolved, we've got Cloud, you kick into AI ML, it's like the change. Like, you know, if I if I try to define how much I've learned, you know, it's con- it's constant upward curve. You know, it's like learning, learning, changing, learning. So yeah. I, I love that part of it that it's we're changing and I do think the IT and, and a lot of other, you know, Irish companies, we're we're really we're we're with it. We're not ahead. Well sometimes we'll be ahead. But mm-hmm. we're with that curve of, of what's oh. changing and we're adopting and we're pivoting. Yeah. And it's yeah. Yeah, great, great that we can do that. So. Definitely, definitely, Laura. And if you were to reflect back on your career to date, has there been a pivotal moment for you? So it, for me, pivotal is, is learning, changing, embracing mm-hmm. the, the new. So yeah, it's, a, a real defining period for me was so I I again I talk about many different sides of the insurance industry and one part I worked on was in the claims side of insurance and I, I don't know if you've ever had to go through an insurance claim hopefully people don't but it it's there's a lot of communication involved so I I worked in a the communication side you know it's like automatic emails automatic um, forms and sending stuff out and it's pretty complex um, and I was really enjoying my time there but um, I, I kind of noticed I was getting a little bit abstracted away from from the the coding side of the house and I noticed I was being asked just once too often would I want to move into management and I was like no I'm a techie why, why would I want to move into management so I kind of I was determined to take my my own career into my own hands and um, I wanted to get back into tech and Liberty IT is pretty good at, you know, if, if you you know you say you want a change you know, for good reason, you know, they look for projects to fit. Um, so yeah, it was at the time when um, chatbots were big and it was like another evolution in the software world with lots of um, text chatbots on websites, so everybody's used to that. But the big evolution was coming with the, the, the speech chatbots, you know, speech to text. So one of the big areas that was in the claims side of insurance is we have a huge mom- number of people in our call centers. So if you if you need to file a claim, you know, you phone a number, you're not, you don't, you don't want to go online and type things in. You want to talk to a person, you know, filing claims never, never great. You know, um, so yeah, so it was um, this project had kicked off. Could we could we implement chatbots into our call center? So that was in 2017. It seems like a lifetime ago, but <laughs> it's not that long ago. Um, so yeah, it was it was um, we were given. I think we were given about three to four months from could we experiment with it, and I love the idea of experimenting. Um, and a short period of time so it was kind of like if it didn't work out it didn't work out we'd take learnings from it and obviously if it did work out we would try and try and scale it um I love just the new tech and it, it was like forget everything that I've learned in the last 20 years or so and just completely move over to a new a new tech stack for 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 that and that's up we, we we decided on the tech stack was AWS and um, just the offerings that they had for their their chat box. So it was like Amazon Lex, and you could do call reading through Amazon Connect, and then under the hood, API gateways, lambdas, DynamoDB, NoSQL. It's like wow, <laughs> bring it on, yes. <laughs> bring it on, and you know even the the evolution of 
used to working on, you know, graphical user interfaces, the GUIs, and now you've got the new term, the VUI, the voice user interface. Like, wow, how do we, you know, how, how do you even sketch that up? So it was even, you know, from top to bottom, just just a fantastic new um, tech, everything. And I know I'm smiling now because I'm remembering like, oh, I don't know if I can, how do you do serverless? And it's like one of those things, you know, you, um, you keep on taking away at the cone and you go, oh, wow, I've got it working. Now, now I realize how it works. And it's just, just fantastic learning about all of that new tech. Really loved it. Um, had a great team. It was like four of us started and we finished with about seven of us in the team. And we pushed out to prod. We, we hit our dates mm-hmm. and pushed out to prod in, in February 2018. And yeah, from like we with loads of observation and everything built in, and we just say, yeah, this is working, this is working. Oh wow, this this this, this is brilliant. This is a revolution. This is so good. And our um, product owners, our stakeholders, they're just over the moon about it. And just getting all that positive feedback was just so good. We knew we knew we got it right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we work quite closely with the AWS. Um. Connect team, the AWS Lex team, and um, when we showcased back to them how we designed it, how we'd evolve it, they were like, wow, th- this is this is best in class for an enterprise to be able to roll this out. Because there's maybe, you know, that some projects are really small scale, mm-hmm. and we were one of the first to, to go massive scale. So yeah, and it was it was all in all, all made in Belfast and Dublin. And it's like wow. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I got so, so Short project, big wow, um, but then the, the big moment was AWS asking us to present our product at, at reInvent in Las Vegas. Wow. Like, <laughs> me in Vegas, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that was just an amazing time. Like reInvent, it's one of the biggest conferences, thousands of devs go to it. They pretty much run the whole Las Vegas Strip, take up many hotels. So, what a, what what a defining moment, you know? Just really proud, and it's and it's not just me. Massive team effort, and great product owners and sponsors, and yeah, and it, it's it's so that's how many years ago now? Doing quick maths, five six years we've gone on. It's just constantly involved and just seeing multi millions. For for Libby Mitchell, yeah, it's a fantastic project. Yeah, really. <laughs> like it's 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 a revolutionary product uh, and impact within oh, insurance, I- Laura, and even like you've totally just redefined the model and um like even like the call like it's millions and millions of pounds and even oh, the time yeah. saved as well. It's just wow, what an achievement coming from Belfast and. Do you know what I love about it? Like whenever we spoke last time, Laura, you mentioned, I, I think it's supposed to be about Liberty IT, like you have those little incubation teams, you know, and yeah. you felt as if you could fail. You were allowed I know, to go and I do love something. That, that attitude. I, I think I hadn't come across that attitude before, you know. We've always like make sure it works, make sure you don't have a bug in prod. You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> don't stress me out before I've even got into prod. But just given that platform of experimentation. And, you know, this has been kind of POC by another team in our incubator space. Um, but then we, we had the real um, product place to put it into in the claim centre. So we took it. So I love that whole it incubated, a couple of folks working on it, POC. Can you can you scale it? That was the, that was the big, I don't know. Couldn't Google it. Nobody saw it before us. So let's see if we can. And it was a... You know, we talk about tech bets. They go, we'll put a bet on it, see if we can do it. Wow. But yes, that to be allowed to fail is, wow, that's massive. Yeah. <laughs> but you're still, you're doing each sprint. We're going like, yep, yeah, we've got this proved out. We've got this proved out, this proved out. We're looking good. So yeah, the, the further we went along each sprint, it was like, yeah, we think it can work. But you just don't know how your users are going to react. You know, that was that was the unknown. Will this work? in a claims insurance, you know, company, big, massive company, will it work? And that was the safety from day one we got the, it's working. Wow. <laughs> I can only just imagine just the, just the momentum of when you're just 
feeling collectively like do you know what this can work like this is this is different like yeah. wow that'd be such a such a great feeling laura talk talk to me how was it standing on stage <laughs> in las vegas with all those thousands of people talking about this brilliant project yeah coming out of so LA. Daunting, <laughs> to say the least knowing that you're being filmed knowing that it's going to go out in the web you know that you've an audience that are you there's always a q a after it you're going like what are they going to ask i don't know but yeah so it totally done and it was um I, sh- I shared the stage and i love sharing the stage with other people you know and um, it's not about me it's about the products about how everybody on the team helped get there so yeah absolutely done but would i do it again hell yeah <laughs> But you know what, like whenever you're on stage talking about something you're passionate, I mean, passion drives, you know, cool. communication, cool. confidence and delivery. Um, And you're obviously clearly very passionate, as you should be for what yourself <laughs> and the team uh, have managed to achieve. Uh, Loris, that's brilliant. Wow. Um, I'd love to move on to the power of, of mentorship. Um, Lauren, what does mentorship mean for you and, and how important is it for one's career? So I think, I know, I was thinking back. I I I get asked, would I be a mentor to others? And it's I I don't think I've ever said no. <laughs> but ha, have I always had a mentor? Um, consciously and subconsciously, I would say. <laughs> so yeah, I think with life ships, uh, in our industry that's constantly changing, like you need to know for yourself, are you going the right direction? Are you picking up the right thing? You know, so I, I mean, often we lack confidence and you just need that mentor to go, what, what do you mean? You're absolutely brilliant. Like, keep going. You're doing the right thing. I think you need that quite often. You know, and we do have within Liberty IT and I know many other companies, you know, you've got that mentor grip. And it's, it's built into my, you know, com- my yearly objectives, you know, that's my job, you know, I coach, I mentor, you know, it's expected and I'd be annoyed, you know, if people didn't do it. So yeah, it's, so it's definitely, it's part of my day job. It's pretty much what I'm saying. So yeah, I love, we've got quite a few groups. I do one-on-ones, but we also have larger, and um, especially with our women in tech, we've got well-established in Liberty IT. And um, so yeah, I've done a couple of, uh, Couple, couple of meetings of that and I know it's there's not many females in architectural senior architectural roles so yeah if I can if I can be a um a good role model for that you know that that helps to share you know and I do I do like to share that I was never the best speaker in the world I had to get over myself practice practice <laughs> and like I say going from being afraid to speak to, I can do this, no problem. <laughs> but 100%. doesn't come easily, but yeah. Work at it. And do you but know yeah. what? You, you, you put out some great content there, Lauren, LinkedIn. I think it was maybe two or three weeks ago advice for women actually who have a fear of, of public speaking because it's so, so daunting. Um, <laughs> but just really good practical steps. I think it was like eight steps you kind of measure just about to actually go yeah. and just help you do it. Um, yeah, I get somebody that's going to let you take a breath when you forget to breathe. Yeah. And we talk about that and we laugh about that. It's going, yeah, I did that last week. I forgot to breathe yeah. when I was talking. But that's because you're not used to it. And you, yeah. yeah. And that's how you, that's how you, that's how you yeah. grow. You grow feeling uncomfortable, you know, in those situations. And and... Small, you know, we uh, always encourage everybody to go to tech shares, tech shares or safe spaces. It's You're talking about something you have done. So you've got the confidence that you've figured something out already, you know. So that, that easy, easy to start, you know, the small steps and, yeah, go to a wider audience. Just, you know, because I think we need to, in our in our world, we need to share, you know. Yeah, but yeah, so, and, and then one of the other items I talked about in one of the mentoring groups quite recently, and I, I touched on it, why I took my, how I took my own career in hand. It felt I was stepping away from the code, but are still doing really important stuff, you know, like making sure design documents were correct, making sure roadmaps were up to date, and talking to the users, you know, onboarding the juniors, making sure everything was in place. And um, 
very, very important stuff to do as a team, but you just find it and then you're getting less and less time to do coding and you're getting recognised for being very organised, for having managerial skills. And guess what? People are asking you, do you want to move into management? Like I said, I, want, I wanted to say a, a techie. And then it, um, I was given an article by Tanya Riley called The Glue Developer. And she's on noidea.dog slash glue. And this was like, wow, that's me in a nutshell. And she, she's she got a fantastic write-up. And she talks about how it is the majority of women that'll choose to do those tasks, those glue tasks. Um, and we'll just do it unconsciously. And, you know, before you know it, you haven't touched code for a year or two. And that, that's not great if you want to stay techy. It gets more, maybe more difficult to get back into it. So, yeah, I, I shared the article in one of our um, women in tech mentoring groups. And people are going, that's me. That's me. And once, once people see themselves as that, because I've never seen it defined, you know, it's like, why are we doing this? Why am I not technical anymore? But once somebody just puts that in front of you, you go, right, that's me. What am I going to do about it to change it? And I'm not knocking going into managerial sites, but we've got some fantastic managers, male and female, but it's for those technical people that find, it defines how you've stepped back from it. And it's like, do something about it and step back in. So I just, I just love that definition of the glue developer. And yeah, you know, if you don't consciously tap into that, that, yeah, you're just left being, you know, your tech skills just get, just not as hot and it gets a bit stressful when everybody else is ahead of you. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, and even I'm, I'm mentioning um, in my area at the minute and going, are you the glue developer? Yes, I am. Right. What do we do about to change it? Get the glue, get those tasks, push down to other people in your team and let's get you back into tech. And yeah, we're on the road. That's I mean, I think that's a really important kind of anchor. Um, that you kind of created this psychological safe environment where you're like, how long are you the glue developer? Um, if so, let's do something about it. Because like Tanya's story, once you shared that, Laura, for me, it was like, wow, like. And she has the perfect definitions of slides as somebody starting off as a, as a software engineer, maybe her onboarding wasn't a great experience. And then she ended up doing something really good, which was a manual task, which ended up as a good result for the customer. But then that kind of led her down to a road where she was doing the glue work, you know, where it was ever like that, as you mentioned. And when it comes to actually getting promotion, it was show me your technical impact for the business. And she's like, well, I've actually reduced the likes of that onboarding time. Um, or kind of like testing, etc. But they're like, mm. so yeah. it's like that. I was like, wow, like that's so true. And even actually from our first initial conversation, like I've been aware of that, even in our business. I'm yeah. like, okay, let's see that. And her husband one or two times, I'm like, let's step in and let's kind of share that load. And my question to you was, if there is somebody who's listening to this um, episode and it resonates with them, so they realize that, you know what? I'm the glue developer. Mm-hmm. What's the first step? step that they can take so it's to realize that you can delegate that to others you know I think when you keep on doing those tasks you'll just keep on doing them so it's a case of I can delegate this this doesn't have to be all me I need to free up time to get back into tech so yeah delegation number one (laughs) Define the glue tasks and delegate them out to the team. Because really, all those things I mentioned, they are team tasks. They're not a solo person task, you know. That's that's the first step. Free up the time, get back into the code. Kind of cultivate that environment, that team environment where everybody rolls the sleeves up and does everything. Um, yeah. Which is so, so important. Yeah, totally. absolutely. Totally. I love a, a team that shares many tasks is generally a better team so then you don't have one person that does one thing you know these these are items that are so easily shared it's quite good once you're actually giving work off to somebody or else you're actually kind of like separate and stuff they're all like oh okay you know, i've actually that person actually went and did something now you know which is actually good because i think sometimes if you're a glue worker you can it can become habitual where you're just always doing yeah. something and you're all like oh, can i actually delegate that to somebody and then what actually you actually do and they do it well you're like oh 
you know, that, that felt good, you know. And, and that's it's breaking just, out that routine, yeah. you know, unless you say, I don't want to do it anymore, you're going to keep you're doing it. You're going to do it, absolutely. So yeah, it's that you're being vocal about, I do like doing this, but I think it's time for someone else to pick it up. Or or just you know just not picking it up from the storyboard. From the start, yeah. That's an easier one for you to tackle. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I uh, love that. And do you know what? We're gonna share that as well, Laura, in the, yeah. the show notes um for, for people to look at because it's great, definitely great definition of there's so many different roles in, in IT and yeah, that's that kind of subconscious one that you don't even know you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. everything starts with awareness, doesn't it, Laura? Totally, totally. Let's move on to the wonderful world of talent, uh, Lauren. Obviously, I think you're involved in you know interviewing and building teams, and you have been for the last number of years. How would you identify you know good talent in in today's market with everything that's going on? Yeah, we used to only when we were getting like devs in, you'd maybe only look at their you know their tech stack and you'd ask them specific questions about how would you code this, how would you code that, and it's it's very um. Oh, quick fire and textbook answers sometimes. Somebody can be well, very well read, but you don't know if they're doing it or not. They just have the stock answer. So yeah, we, we, we now have a number of you know different angles for doing interviews now. And we've, we've broken them up into different parts. So we, you know, we want to see that people can design. We want to see that people can code. We want to know that they can talk to users. And I know not everybody can do everything 100%, but we want to see those well-rounded developers that we know we can put them at different, you know, put them in front of a customer. They're going to be comfortable in front of a customer, asking them, what do you mean by this feature? <laughs> can you explain it further? You know, digging into the, how should this work properly? You know, not just being a hard code coder. You know, we do need all rounded people, I think, in our, in our world now, because it's, again, it's, it's forever changed and you want to know that people are, are keeping up with tech. You know, I quite often, I, I love asking the question, you know, tell me where you go to to learn your, your new tech. And it can, can be quite telling. Yeah, yeah. Many, many angles. Yeah, yeah, I go there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, you know, it's a human skills, isn't it? But just technical skills, in order to make somebody all-rounded, you know, particularly... I guess in the environment where, where you're in, where you know there's probably multiple different touch points and stakeholder management, um, you know, equally too. And I'd love to kind of move on to retention. Because obviously mm -hmm. it is difficult going out to get good people. Um, but you know, it's perhaps even more challenging to actually keep good people. And I think it's something about Liberty IT where it always just screams out longevity, mm -hmm. you know. So there's a secret sauce in there somewhere, Laura. <laughs> what is it that keep people uh, yeah, in, in jobs? Okay, I've been <laughs> one of them because I've been there since two thousand. <laughs> Changing in tech probably would, well, not, shouldn't say changing in tech because that could be seen as quite a negative thing sometimes. I think the embracing of new tech um, and, you know, making sure you're using the right tool for the right thing, that's, that's pretty important. I know a lot of a lot of people maybe say, well, I'm not learning AWS. I'm not learning serverless. You know, I'm, I'm not using, I'm not using Google. I'm not allowed to use, you know, that. That can cause people to just go, that's why I'm interested, and if I don't get it here, I'm going to move on. But yeah, you know, we talked about things as well, like coaching and mentoring. You know, if you don't have that, you can maybe feel a little bit isolated. So as I say, it's, it's a big deal in our company. It's in our objectives. Once you're above senior, it's, you're expected to do it. Not expected to do it, encouraged. And it should be a natural thing as well. You know, we want to... We want to embrace people and make sure they're on the right career path and yeah like anything they get the right training at the right time do they get recognition so i think yeah room for growth all those kind of things that, the, that i think we offer up and yeah just some really interesting tech as well it's really it's... some really interesting projects and we're, we're getting larger and larger as we go along and it gives more and um, more opportunities for, for all these different projects, yeah. It's an interesting company. Insurance is not boring at all. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yeah. And you have all these like, incubation periods, all these different projects and the latest cutting edge technology. But I think more importantly as well, like the the real servant leadership, which you can see, which is just humbling, um, Laura. So yeah, keep up the great work, Liberty IT. Um, <laughs> with, um, 
what would you see as the greatest opportunity currently in our industry? In our world, gosh, tell you. <laughs> I know big AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, that's the big, yep, if you're not using it. <laughs> and you're embracing it. Again, like loads of incubation projects because it's all so new. It's, I feel like it's still a little bit raw. Yeah. How do we use it properly? How do we use it, you know, sensibly? So, yeah, I think there's, it's massive, massive. And I was at... Um, uh, Belltech this year, and go, gosh, there's so much happening on our doorstep. Belfast Harbour Estate, they hope they have a current project for autonomous vehicles to go in Belfast. Wow, brilliant. So, like things like that, you're like, this is happening, this is real, this is not just, you know, Silicon Valley, this, this is Belfast. Brilliant. Corners as well in city centre. It's um yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's it's incredible. It's such a such a vibrant market, um, Laura. So uh, I think in, like Ireland as a, a nation as well, the island of Ireland, we've got so many opportunities, and I know Invest and I is doing an amazing job at bringing back American firms, and that's where Liberty Mutual, you know, it was Invest and I that 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 kicked off at you know Liberty IT in Belfast. So Invest and I is doing a great job, yeah. and I think it's our, I think the local network is superb at, at doing tech shares. There was at a AWS meetup. Tuesday, two days ago, okay. with, with Gunnar Grush, and he was talking about chaos oh. engineering, how we can inject that into all of our AWS sites, and we go, chaos, ah. bring it on. Love that. <laughs> like, that was just Tuesday, and yes, yeah, so there's so many conferences, you know, meetups, conferences, I know we've got the likes of Bell Tech, Serverless Days is coming up, NIDEV conference. These, these are brilliant, and I, I love the willing to share. There's a lot, I, I don't know if a lot of other have worked in Scotland or England. I don't know if they have that same kind of connectivity. It's, there's something about Ireland. We're really good at just getting together and going, we're doing great stuff. We'd like to share. Yeah. Absolutely. Like it's, almost, it's, it's almost like we have an onus to actually share what we're doing and our, and our better practices so people can actually learn. And I think the tech meetup scene, especially since COVID now, Laura, like it's just ramping up and there's mm. almost one or two events you know every every week and there could even be a an end of a 20 person lightning talk in black box you know for instance yeah. women tech and all that yeah. kind of stuff as well it's just really good like there's options beyond that we always kind of share and advise any listeners to get involved in it because you never know who you're going to speak to and what you'll learn like you definitely come out more engaged more empowered and with more knowledge yeah i just think that you know, if I think back to say twenty years, I don't, I don't think there would have been a decent conference to go to locally. Okay. You had to go across to London, get over to America, very expensive. So yeah, I love that these homegrown conferences. You know, by nature they're cheap because you don't need a hotel room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ticket price wise, they they're so inexpensive, and yeah. it's days out. Just learn so much. Yeah, absolutely. Laura, listen, this has been an unbelievable conversation as it knew it would be. So we kind of round off here with a couple of closing questions. Mm -hmm. First one is, what advice would you have to any aspiring technologist? I'll probably summarise what I've just been yeah. <laughs> on about. Keep learning, keep sharing. <laughs> love it, love it. You're, you're, every day is a skill day. If, you don't, like if I don't learn something new every week, you know, uh, I set aside time every Monday morning. I've got, you know, certain areas I go across and go, right, what's new? And it's like, there's always something. It's like, oh, that would be on the to do to look into further. So, yeah, it's, it keeps brilliant. So, you actually, like, set, you actually set yourself, you set yourself <laughs> space on a weekly basis then to go and upskill and learn. I think Monday morning, always do it. Just seems to be like, right, don't have too many meetings. Just get myself set up for the week for things to learn. So, yeah. Love that. Regimental with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. And what book or audio has <laughs> had a profound impact on your career and why? So I'm going to go with two. One old one. one. <laughs> and I had to look back at the, I still have it upstairs. Uh, 1993 book, Writing Solid Code. Oh. 
we came out in Microsoft and again, it was like before we had the internet, you couldn't just Google stuff. You had to buy a book to, to maybe, you know, progress your, your, your knowledge. So yeah, writing solid code. And I'm a great advocate of engineering practices, engineering excellence, writing solid code. That just was me in a, quite a large book. You know, things like, here's how to do correct naming conventions. Here's how to do unit testing. Here's how to do correct error handling. They're like all still relevant. So 1993, it's pretty good. You know, it's it kind of set, defined my career that, yeah, I love engineering excellence. And we can all be better, can always find room for improvement. <laughs> and my other book, moving into the architectural sphere, was The Architect Elevator by Greer Hope. Um, he describes being a good architect as being able to be able to convey what you're trying to architect, design to the executives, your stakeholders, and then be able to ride that elevator to the developer levels and be able to convey to them how they're going to implement it. And I, I love the, even that whole visual of riding the elevator, being able to speak differently, summarizing, going into detail. So for me, that moving into the architectural sphere, excellent brick, great advice. Yeah. That's brilliant. It's almost like you're riding the elevator because you're still up at different offices with different technical people, non-technical people, and, and having that kind of stakeholder management and communication. Um, love that, Laura. And do you know what? When you mentioned there about writing solid code, I mean, typically what we find in Code Bytes and the book review is that the old books are the best books that still are used <laughs> in today's practice. I love do you know that. What I mean? I love that. That there's still, you know, as much as our industry has moved on, oh, yeah. Read, that yes, that some of the old practices are still relevant, and so, and for the right reason. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, love, 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 love going back to some of those books. Going, that's still true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, Laura, listen, again, this has been a brilliant conversation. If people want to find out a bit more about yourself or Liberty IT, how could they go about doing this? Yeah, I'm on, on LinkedIn, Laura McFarland. If you Google for me, you should be able to find me. Um, as far as Liberty, we are on liberty-it.co.uk. And there's plenty on LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok. My, yes, there's YouTube. <laughs> there's quite a lot of that we cross cut across there. Yeah. Oh, geez, Love yeah. that. Yeah. Laura, listen, this has been a phenomenal conversation. Thank you so much for coming on. No, thank you. So I really enjoyed it. Thank really you. appreciate it. Back to my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Laura.